My son wants to find more ways to practice his professional falling, so we're going to go ahead and make him a vert ramp. That way he can do it at home instead of just at the skate park. It's a bunch of 2x4 studs. You can cut to length depending on the width that you want your ramp to be, which we really only want it to be about 4 foot wide because of space issues at the house. And then you kind of just have to template this. Now I'm sure there's a template somewhere else that's better than this that you might be able to download online, but we just kind of winged it. And then we refine it later as you'll see. For the siding I would recommend 3 4 inch thick preferably, or 5 8 inch thick minimum siding for plywood sheeting the five ply good stuff because it's going to get constantly bombarded and beat it up by people once you're done refining the edge and you have a suitable side then go ahead and trace that right on top of another piece of plywood and replicate it for the other side that way you have equal We have all our studs cut to four foot and then we subtract an inch and a half because remember we were adding three fourth inch siding on each side. So in order for the overlaying four foot sheet to be flush with everything, you have to subtract your studs by that much. Then you gotta make sure they're all the same length. We're using a combination of just scrap studs I have. Two by fours, two by sixes. Two by fours will work. I would definitely not try to overweight this thing, especially if you're gonna try and make it mobile and move it around because it will get very heavy quickly. We're using two inch self tapping deck screws right into the side of the studs. So we did this wrong initially with trial and errors, so, but I'm just showing you this process for one to show you how not to do it and also to show you how to do this. This is the thickest we found out that we can get away with was 3 8 inch like plywood from the hardware store. We could have went 1 4 which would have been much easier to bend in, but it would have been a little bit easier to damage and more brittle over time. And you would have had to put more studs to tighten it in. And we didn't want to do that. We didn't really see a benefit if we could make the 3 8 inch work, which we did. Now for the coping, that was a little bit more tedious. They used a hole saw with an inch and a half bore to take out an inch and a half slot on each side. And then I just measured it where I thought it would fit out. And you had to cut it at an angle which later on I found out here I'm cutting it straight and it did not work. So you had to really taper that circular saw all the way to the left. That way you can make the angle congruent with a circular cutout. So like this, this is how you should have got it out if you did it right the first time, which we did a lot of second time fixes. And after that, this should slide in and meet the other side if you had the holes correct. And also note that on the top piece, you're going to have to do the exact same beveled cut to mirror the bottom and it's going to fit over the coping how you need it to fit which we'll show you here a little bit later and as always my son got his hands dirty in the project because well this is going to be for him plus he's finally 14 and legal age to be on youtube that's a big deal you can't have your kids in most of these videos but because he's a young man now he can be on air no not crooked Straight, there, that's straight. No, you had it, but you're putting it in straight. I'm no. gonna hold the tip up here. Get, give yourself. <laughs> you missed the whole thing. <laughs> Dude, it's not going out. There, now put it lower, like an inch lower. All right, so we had to re actually take this whole thing apart. We rushed it, didn't measure it right. So then we had to remeasure all the boards. We cut those two by sixes into two by threes just so we didn't have to go buy more wood. It's much straighter. And we're get, the way to build it is actually from the back forward. Because if you don't get the back correct, none of this is gonna end up right. So we tried to build it from the front up and then worry about the back and that was not the way. So we actually readjusted the curb too. When, after looking at the curb, having skated myself, and him having been on ramps, we were thinking that the apex coming up is a little, a little rough. It's not so much of a smooth transition. This is a much smoother transition. We also uh, resin coated, if you can tell. We resin coated. We did one layer of resin on here just to kind of smooth it out, get it prepped, because we are going to end up resin coating the whole thing. Because that's how all professional skate skate ramps are done. They're resin coated to to resist obviously the weathering. This thing will get rained on. It will get beat up by the sun. So we'll. We'll resin coat it and then we will did you miss it again how'd you miss it again i mean you have the hole that that says don't do it there and you did it again you told me to put an inch below an inch dominic that's right exactly where it was before oh was it Dominic, it's like it's like one millimeter below i said a whole inch yeah, yeah. here keep going keep going okay an inch lower right there straight that's not straight that's crooked that's crooked Straight, that's right. Nope, crook it again. There you go. Oh, look at that, yo. Yeah.
you got it. And so, so between the initial layer of resin, kind of smoothing out the surfaces and fixing that and prepping it all, and we're just layering it all, it's gonna turn out to be much better. And then we'll give it a fire, final layer of resin. So we decided to add some vertical, like some under supports, bottom supports, and just to help with I don't know, overall strength and rigidity and then accidentally running into the bottom and not caving it in. So we'll need a few more. But possibly another one back there. Could have spaced it out more, but we're running out of wood and I cut that one wrong. Okay, so what we're about to do here is, what we did was, we had to shim this because I cut it too low. I figured that out after trying to raise in height and leveling out everything, it was still too low. So we had to shim that. That was stupid, but it worked. The shims worked. And then we took some thin sheet metal and we riveted it with uh, stainless steel rivets. So. And plus they're covered up with the wood. The wood finally lines up where it's supposed to line up because that was another big stressor. So once we start to screw this part down, we still got to put like two more studs in here. But once we screw this part down, we should be good to line it up. And it should actually, it's all starting to work. So now that the back and the front are even, it's time to actually make the inner side the correct way now. So we have all the studs cut exactly the same to the correct length and all of that the suds plus the sides will equal four feet which the four foot sheet of plywood we lay over this will just be flush onto that towards the end where it starts to get skinny i use two by threes and eventually two by twos and i think i even use for the very end a one by two before i ran out of room the end is going to be a little bit hard you can tape a really thin sheet metal over it to get a completely thin edge so the wood front doesn't ever uh, degrade and that's something that we will do later with the ramp this is the initial piece that we cut first before we took it apart and redid the whole thing. It still fits, so we're gonna just go ahead and use it again. Right now we just have it tacked down with a few screws and we are drawing a line down where each stud is. We have it marked on the side so we can just draw lines down and we can just insert the screws along each line. So after I got it all lined up, my son came out and he took it upon himself to put all the rest of the screws down in each slot. So there are many studs and he needed about four or five screws in each stud across to really crunch down that 3 8 piece of plywood to the bunch. Actually, I think there might be more. There's about eight across each plank if you're looking at it now. And that just really tightened it. Little by little, you wanna go either from top to bottom or from bottom to top. And they just, they just suddenly sink right in there and it tapers in real nicely and holds. What I wanna show you here is that, what the inside looks like. Now we squared it off here and we we're going to square it off here and add and finish the box and that's what we should have done we didn't do that because for some other reason i thought it'd be more important to look down in here but now looking down in here i don't i didn't really need that and i should have just squared it off because that's where it became a little uneven and you can tell it became a little uneven especially on the other side where we're gonna have to do some trimming it's such a slight little like about half inch or three quarter inch off it's about a half inch off but it's still off so there's a few ways you can hide that conduit sunk into the ramp without actually exposing screws or anything that you would catch it on me i took little thin pieces of sheet metal and tapered it to the bottom and then pulled it and attached it underneath to one of the studs that were building up the ramp then i went in there later and cleaned that off so there really is no hanging stud to catch anything on or or hit your wheel on and then i built up that little edge because it was after i remodified it, it didn't fit flush like i thought so i built that up with thick and epoxy and after that cured, we're going to go ahead and put the top on and resin coat the entire thing with countertop, tabletop epoxy, whatever, armor light from Hobby Lobby, or you can just order it on Amazon or eBay. They have countertop resin all day. It's good enough for testing. So we got a nice good resin coat here. It'll be nice and protective and a uh, decent to step on up here while he's trying to drop in. The thickened epoxy into the bar came out pretty good. Seamed that up pretty nice. Even got rid of that little section here where that's pretty much completely gone. Could have maybe grinded that down a little. I mean, that's just imperfect. We're talking about like small frivolous imperfections that we're not having to worry about.
All right, man. It's so British. You scared? No, it's just so vertical. It's not Virgo. That's not even true, Virgo. See, you made it down. You're right, it's not vert. It's not even close to vert, Dominic. No, it's, it's not. It's, it's not even it's, close. It's just, it looks super weird. I mean, that's about the standard arc of a, of a ramp. Like we retrimmed it, it's pretty good. It's even, it's even not near as aggressive as it could be. Like a true vert, it would have been like six feet at true vert. There you go. I was skating so long. Don't be scared your whole life, Dominic. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could practice on this before you go and embarrass yourself at the skate park. <laughs> hey, don't break my RV. That was actually kind of cool. I mean, if you had to pull it off. All right, we'll get that. We'll get that trailer out of the way. Then you can just have fun. All right. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm actually very proud of this. It doesn't shake at all. all right, trying to skateboard, go ahead. It just feels like it's gonna slip out. If you say that, then it will slip out. But here, here's the whole thing. It's, it's, it's the, 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 the vert is actually leaning slightly back. It's actually helping you out because it's not, it's not completely straight. The, the driveway is kind of slamping this way. You're actually having help. I looked at it, I went up it, it's fine. That's a pretty good angle. Oh. See, see, you made it and you just, you bailed. How are you? That's why you wear pads, folks, and gloves. That was pretty good, go do it again. This time, like, don't fall. Transition sucks. You just already have done it, now you're scared to do it again? Dude, you did it and you made it all the way down. Oh, no. You're just give, me a, give me a moment. Give me Dude. So overall, he liked it. He wished it was wider. There's really not much you can do and you can't really go up in it and do anything but stall and practice down, which is his bigger deal. It's kind of practice dropping in and doing things or maybe getting some speed on some initial stuff we'll make later. But it's not bad for a first ramp. And it's pretty much the way you would have to do it. It's just some eager stuff from Home Depot and some resin. And there it was. Hope this helps you guys out in your projects. Take care. See you around.